In this video, we'll be covering PyTZ, which is a time zone library that uh, we can use with our dates and times. We'll also be covering another library called Arrow, and that is also for working with dates and times in Python. Let's go ahead and get started. We'll import the PyTZ library. And if you don't have that loaded already, um, you can use pip or pip3 and then install PyTZ. Um, I already have it installed, so I'm not actually going to run this. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to get a list of time zones. And this library will allow us to, um, we, we can pass in a country uh, symbol and get all the time zones for it. So I'm going to create a new variable called time zones. Okay, and then just to print this out, I'm going to import uh, the pretty print library because it's going to give us a long list. And go ahead and save it and run it. And so we have all the time lists, or excuse me, all the time zones within the US. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to create a date that's um, going to be localized. Actually, let's start off by just creating a Pacific time zone object. So I'll set my variable to specific. And we're going to call the time zone method. And the one that we're going to pass in is this one right here, America, Los Angeles. I'll go ahead and print the type along with the variable itself. And what I'm going to do here is comment this out so we don't keep seeing it over and over. And as you can see, we have a PyTZ time zone class um, set to America Los Angeles, which is our Pacific time zone. So now that we have that, we can create a local date that's going to be uh, localized to that time zone. We're gonna call the localize method and then pass in, um, we, we need to import the date time. And we'll go ahead and set that to now. And let's go ahead and run that. And notice that what we're getting when we create this local date using the time zone object to localize the date, we're getting a Python date time object in return. And that is set to the current um, date and time. And another thing we could do is we could print the time zone info. And we can see that uh, the time zone info is automatically added to it with um, the Pacific time zone. Now notice, um, so let's compare that with just creating a naive local date with no time zone. Uh, just like before, we're going to call datetime.now. Okay, so just by creating a local date, or I'm sorry, like a just a um, naive date, actually it shouldn't even be called local date. Anyway, we notice that we have no time zone info. It's just set to none because we did not use any, we did not pass any time zone info information into it. And we didn't use the um, time zone object that we got from PyTZ to set the date. And another benefit of using PyTZ is it's, probably the safest way to set a uh, time zone, um, taking things like daylight savings time and standard times and all that um, stuff into account. Um, it actually uses what's called the Olson database. Uh, the Olson database is basically the standard for creating or just handling the different time zones and being able to keep track of all of them. Um, so that's the reason why most of the time when dealing with dates, you're also importing one or two libraries. Usually PyTZ is very common throughout uh, Python applications. The final thing that we will be covering is the fact that since most data is stored in UTC format, um, UTC is, general, is, is generally a best practice to keep our data in that 
um, unless we are displaying that to the user. So we use a localized time to show if, in, if any user is going to be interacting with our application. When we go to store that, uh, a lot of times we will store the UTC date and then maybe in another field inside the database, we'll store the um, user's time zone that they're in. So what we'll do here is create a new variable called UTC date. So we already have our local date in the Pacific time zone. So we can call the as time zone method. And then so py, so pytz.utc will just change our date to the, um, to the UTC date time zone. Let's go ahead and print that. Let's go ahead and clear this. And then we run that. So basically um, it added eight hours to our date, which is um, since this is winter time, you know, the offset is gonna be eight hours. So we have 17.13 uh, UTC time when it's actually 9.13 is the local time. And then, so once we, we would store it as that, and then when we retrieve our data for the user to see, then we would convert that back to the local time. Okay, the second library that we will be covering is Arrow. Arrow is basically a very handy uh, Python library that we can use for date times. I guess the best way to describe this, it, it basically gives us an alternative that um, we can work with dates in a much more concise way. Um, a lot of times we'll have, there won't be the need to write near as much code. And also it has a bunch of handy features like iterating through time intervals, converting dates, times, and it can also work with the built-in um, date time object that Python provides. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, we're gonna go ahead and import arrow. Now, if you do not have the library installed, um, you can use pip um, to go ahead and install it. Okay, and the first thing that we will do, we will set a variable called uh, UTC. And okay, so we create our new variable. Um, we're gonna print out the type along with the value. And let's go ahead and run it. And you see we have an arrow, basically an arrow has its own um, class for storing the date. And then um, we print out the value. Um, basically looks like an ISO date format is what we get by default. Okay, let's go ahead and create a local date. And so we already saved a UTC date, so we just need to convert that to, um, let's convert it to a Pacific a date, so US Pacific. And we can see that, so since there's an eight hour offset, um, the local date is basically eight hours earlier than the UTC date, or the time is actually eight hours earlier. So since that's um, in the format of just an ISO date, um, there's some very simple uh, methods that we can call um, that arrow just makes very easy. First is the format method. And that just makes it a little more human readable. Um, instead of the ISO date, we actually get some spacing and um, just a little bit of formatting. We can also call the naive uh, property. So you're getting a UTC offset, um, looks like we got milliseconds. So naive, it basically just prints out the date without taking any time zone information at all um, into uh, context. And we could also get our time zone info that we set. And let's go ahead and run it. And so what it does is it links to a file. Um, so it's basically storing these files that have the um, time zone info. And it should be a binary file. Let's go ahead and look at it. And yeah, it's a binary file. So if we look at that, that's all we're gonna get. They're storing files for each time zone when we install the module. And it has some very um, handy features also. Um, so if we create a new variable and set that to arrow.get, and it, for most formats, we can just pass in a string and it'll just know what to do with it. And let's give it a time also, we'll go 1230. And obviously, so we, 
did not pass any formatting. Um, it just basically handled it for us. What we can do to be on the safe side is pass the um, format information into it. So let's. So we have year, month, date, and then. And then if we do that, we should get the same result. Let's save it and run it. And which we do, and then notice that uh, the type that we get from this is also going to be an arrow uh, class. Um, so another thing that we can do, let's say we want a Python date time object. Um, we can do that, and then it's just as simple as calling date time. Let's change our variable name to dt object. Okay, so by just adding the date time property, um, what we're getting is um, just the standard Python date time instead of the arrow class. So this is this makes it very easy to work with the standard dates. Maybe you have code already that has a bunch of just standard dates stored in it or being used. So I mean, you can still use this library to add a lot of functionality. Okay, so let's say we have a variable. Um, it's just an ISO date string, and like I said. Um, uh, Arrow does a very good job of figuring out the standard date string types that you um, pass into it. So let's go ahead and print that out. It'll just handle many different strings that you just pass into it. Another thing too, getting timestamps is very easy. So let's use our local date again, and then we just need to call the timestamp property. And down here you can see we have a timestamp that's printed out. I'm just going to run and show a couple more. Uh, so we can also call the uh, date method to get a date and we call the time if we just want the time. So let's go ahead and run these again. And then as we can see down here, we just have um, the dates with the time separated. If we call the date method, um, we basically lose any value that it, the, so the time is basically just drops off. Arrow also has its own custom formatters, and they are a little bit different than the than the ones that are standard in the date time object. So let's go ahead and create one. And notice we're not using any of those uh, percent um, plus a whatever character the placeholder is. Um, like I said, they have their own. So if we go ahead and save that and run that. Um, so it's very easy to create human readable dates. And then so there's also a humanize method. OK, so if we just um, since the date was, you know, very close to our local time, um, by the time it hits this line of code, um, it's going to say something like just now. Some of the other things that it'll say are like an hour ago or a month ago, a day ago, um, et cetera. That might be a handy feature if you're trying to create human um, or try to create output that the user is going to consume. And it also has uh, built in functionality to round everything off. So if we want to go local dot floor, and then we'll pass in the hour. And then we could also call the ceiling the seal method specifically. And as you can see, so we have our hours um, rounded off and then it's going to go to the last minute um, and then um, just before it's about to turn to the next hour. And then adding um, dates or, or changing dates, um, it's as simple as using the shift method. So we want to shift, let's go ahead and add three hours. And so we um, were able to add three hours to our time. Um, if we wanted to go in reverse, um, so if we want to go back in time, all we need to do is just pass the um, minus sign um, in with our um, value. Another thing too is we can create dates similar to that of the date time object. So let's create a variable called start and it's going to be of the arrow class. And so just like the date time object, um, we pass in a year, five, and then 1230. 
we'll do something similar for the end, except we'll just uh, make it um, a few hours later. Actually, we need to call this end. So what we can do now is if we have a start time and an end time, we can basically inter um, iterate through a range of um, intervals. So let's uh, just go ahead and create a for loop. So we'll call this for hourly. And so arrow, so we're calling the arrow class and then the span range. And so our interval is going to be hour, hour by hour. So uh, we need to pass in our start and end time. And let's just go ahead and print hourly. And if we save that file and run it. Okay, so as you can see um, in our inside of our for loop, we have a tuple with a with an arrow date object um, as the start and then end for the interval. As you can see, each one of these is a tuple with a basically consisting of an hour for every time that um, the that line is hit inside of our for loop. So this covers just some of the basic functionality of PyTZ and Arrow. Um, they are two libraries that you see in many applications, many, or many Python applications. And this is just some of the handy features that both of those libraries cover. Thank you for watching.